Hello again, everyone. Hello, 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 you beautiful bastards. You're looking lovely today as usual. I can see that glow radiating off of you. We are returning with SCP. I know a little a couple of our videos have been slightly delayed recently, but I've been feeling really sick. I had a cough for like a good week and I couldn't talk and it was horrible and I'm still like 50% there, but we're good enough to speak. So we're gonna be watching another SCP-682, The Inevitable End of All But Me by SCP Illustrated. I'm super excited for this one because I love 682. It's like one of my favorite SCPs. I feel like he's one of everyone's favorite SCPs. Who doesn't love the indestructible reptile? That's all I'm saying. This is like our third video I think we've made on this guy now. I think we'll find out. But yeah, let's check it out. Let's get right into the video. Uh, this video will be live when I'm actually live on Twitch. So if you're just watching it now first, do check me out, please. Because I do stream three to four times a week on Twitch doing various games. Sometimes we just chat. Sometimes we... I mean, we mostly just chat, but we do play a lot of games at the same time. And it's just a really cool, chill place, and I'd love to integrate more of my YouTube and Twitch community together, because you all are amazing. Um, so yeah, just check me out, please. Please. You'll, you'll, you'll not regret it, I promise you. Back to the video. Loading. Ooh. Good day everyone and welcome back to SCP Illustrated for the first video of 2020 and it's a 682 video. But it's not a versus video this time. This is a custom tale written by Dr. Sumerian and myself, though Ooh. mostly Sumerian, I just pitched the idea. So in this video we see 682 as the universe slowly begins to die all around him. It's not dying from an XK event, it's just time. time. After trillions and trillions of years, even the universe will begin to grow old and 682 has a front... As they say, nothing beats time time conquers all even a reptiles indestructible as 6a2 cannot even best time it that sounds really depressing already see for all of it there's no content warning needed for this one except you might feel some sympathy for 6a2 by the end but apart from that let's begin The following data release has been authorised by the following council members and administration staff. Wait, 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 wait. Code name of these council members. Steamy, KL Barra, Len Hox, Captain Core. <laughs> Captain Core sounds like a gym superhero. Don't worry, we'll get your abs in shape. Cam Core is here to save the day. Hunter Killer, yeah, it sounds like a DVD killer. Frank. Frank is the deadliest of them all. If a being that wanted nothing but end of everything was suddenly confronted with the end of everything, then what would they become? Seeing as they are part of that everything, then would they too end and so their desire would be their undoing? However, what if the being lived past the end of everything? With everything gone, what would they want? What would it exist for once its desires and purposes have been fulfilled? With nothing left then but surely. So 682, he wants the end of humanity, right? So that's true. Once humanity's gone, what does 682 actually want out of life? Because 682 is intelligent. If an immortal wanted death, then by definition it would be unobtainable. Oh, that's horrible actually. If an immortal wanted death, then Humans were more powerful than he'd been willing to give them credit for. They shot him, burned him, electrocuted him, and finally threw him in a box. If humans could handle fighting each other, they could certainly handle fighting him. They solved world hunger, brought about world peace, cured every disease, filled every need. But they grew bored with their crystalline cities they built for themselves. To war! I feel like that's the default for humans when we're bored of peace, of happiness. When we get bored of happiness, we crave violence. I don't know why. The end of all things crept quietly along after them, unnoticed. As soon as they stopped fighting, mankind was no more. He still hated them, of course, but the ease at which they went almost astonished him. Wait, what? Suddenly no one cared enough. Suddenly almost no children were born. A few metal tubes threw themselves violently off the planet. And then 
quite suddenly. Wait, what? Humanity died altogether. He escaped not long after. Wait, wait, wait. Humanity died out because of peace? Wait, how does that work? That reminds me of Serenity, where they all just let themselves die because of that, like, bliss. Um, I hope you guys know the movie Serenity. It's, it's one of my favorite movies. So because they released this, like, bliss into the atmosphere that stopped fighting, it basically, like, ceased all other behavioral functions in humans, and then they basically just um, stopped everything else. So they stopped, like, eating, breathing, breeding, talking, living... So maybe that happened in this case. Without violence, what are we? Cool, that's a bit of a better thing to think about. Humans are nothing without their basal violent instincts. We just cease to exist. Cool, this video is a mindfuck. It's too early in the morning for this. <laughs> After the end, though, the damage they'd done to the world crashed into reality and the world died too. Plants withered away, then anything that ate plants, and then everything else. In a few thousand years, the carrion eaters died off and he was truly alone. At first, it was a welcome change. He'd learned the hard way that eternity was only really worth it when things changed. And without any other life around, nothing really changed on a day-to-day -day scale. He'd wake up, look out over the dead earth, oceans, or at a nearly unchanging sky, Aww. and then go back to sleep. That would be so lonely. For endless eons, he waited... He charted the stars by drawing in the dead earth and feel a pang of joy whenever one of them died. But they were always being replaced. Over and over he'd see one die and another be born. But humans had done the same thing for a long time as well. The sun had gotten larger and larger in the sky over time. Then it ballooned. <gasps> oh my god! Would he survive? The planet being engulfed in the sun, because that is going to happen. Our sun eventually will become a supergiant and the Earth will become essentially like the new Mercury or Venus, I believe. So our planet will eventually become nothing but a, a molten hunk of rock because of the sun. Oh, God, this sounds horrible. And to fill the entire daytime sky, the oceans turn to deserts and the deserts turn to molten glass. The whole surface of the earth oh. glowed a deep orange. He suffered through the worst of it for a few million years, perching on the few rocks sturdy enough to stand up to the heat. He screamed when he could, but no one was around to hear him. Then the sun shrank into a tiny white point in the sky, larger than the brightest stars, but only just. The dead earth slowly cooled, though there was no atmosphere left to breathe. He was alone with his own thoughts, and again, he began to chart the stars. This is so sad. At first, it continued on as before. The charts began to cover more and more of the Earth. With nothing but time, he drew his constellations and calculations and came to a conclusion. The stars were dying too. Once they'd been replaced as quickly as they died, but now, maybe two died before another was born. Later still, three. Then four. This video is mind-fucking me because I've always said to people, oh, I would love to be immortal, you know? What's what's wrong with being immortal? Like, you get to live forever. Yeah, people will, like, pass on in your life and all that lot, but, like, to me, in the grand scheme of things, being immortal would be, just be great because you would never miss an experience of the universe, right? But this is really uh, making me recontemplate that because I didn't consider... What happens at the end of the universe if you're immortal? Oh, oh, this is... Oh, guys, why did you make me watch this? The number kept climbing until there was only a few dozen stars left in the sky. The only record that the sky had once been filled with light was etched on continent-spanning star charts across the surface of the dead Earth. He realised, of course, that his fate was inevitable. Even after all the stars had gone, he would still be here. He would be the only thing left in an infinite darkness that would continue for eternity. He rested his head on the rock and gazed at a star, wondering for how much longer it would burn before fizzling out. I'm going to cry. This is really sad. Then one day, a, a trillion, trillion years after the last star had blinked out, 682 squinted at the dark night sky. A new star had formed, 
This one was brighter than anything he'd ever seen before. It moved strangely and, and quickly. Eventually, it darkened and disappeared. A few years on, another oh. star joined it and darkened again. And then another. For millennia, they grew a colony above him. Larger and larger still until it hung over him, like a tantalizing tree. Just out of reach. Then they began to land on his world. Is it humans? He felt the rage return. His world. His home. But they deliberately avoided his drawings. Chose the few blank spaces Aww. between the constellations and calculations to dig out the earth. Then they placed boxes gingerly into the ground, coloured them, and drew new markings. Aww. That's In so a few respectful. months they returned, this time with another box. He approached their landing party this time, staying as hidden as he could. He looked, and they were humans. He listened to the ground for the vibration. I'm sorry, I refuse to believe in this amount of time humans wouldn't have evolved at least a little bit based on the conditions that were happening around them. I refuse. Humans are not perfect enough beings to not have evolved at least slightly in like trillions of years. I, I hope that it shows like the evolution of the humans. Maybe I'm getting way too ahead of myself, but I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just, we ain't perfect. If we, evolution would do something and we probably mated with some alien species along the lines as well. I mean, come on. Operations of their speech, but the language was nothing he'd ever heard before. <clears throat> over and over, year after year they came and year after year he would go and listen. Eventually, he understood their language. Today he'd woken up to another shooting star again coming to his home. He made his way to the landing site and waited. The men and women followed the same pattern as always. He suspected they knew he was there, but they'd made no moves against him. Maybe one day he'd kill them, destroy their ship, or take it to the stars and end them once and for all. But for all his petty fantasy, he knew that he would be alone soon enough. Time would destroy whatever he didn't, and in the end, he'd just be bored sooner. So he let them have their ceremony. Aww. The box was laid into a freshly dug hole, and a man in a slightly shinier suit stood and spoke to <laughs> half a dozen other figures. The shinier you are, the higher the ranking. I'll remember that. Molnos Varash. The spawn of two Greldniks would have had more grace and kindness. You hurt everyone with your words or hands or tools. It did not matter to you. And for this, we are sorry. Sounds a bit aggressive. Though we deserved better from you, so too did you deserve better from us. Instead, you hmm. died hungry and alone in the between spaces. You scarcely had a bed and no quarters to call your own. Oh, it's a, it, I get it now. Okay, so one of their crewmates died, right? And so he's returning him to Earth, to the home of their ancestors. Right, okay. I commit now your soul to the stars, the home of your ancestors. I commit now your body to the Earth, the home of their ancestors. I hope you find the peace deserved in life somehow sounds like he had a terrible may the life star keeper bless your passing may the star keeper bless your ancestors and may the star keeper bless us all bless <laughs> the humans covered the hole with dirt slowly and then shuffled <clears throat> into their ship scp 682 the star keeper oh He's the star keeper. They call, wait, 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 go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. So they think that 682 is a god. So they're aware of him, but they think he is a god because he's survived everything, I guess. That's why, oh, I see. That's why they were so respectful of the drawings because they're his sketches. And oh, this is such an interesting twist. The humans covered the hole with dirt slowly, and then shuffled into their ship. 
SCP-682, the Star Keeper, and the last witness to a dying universe, watched them disappear into the black eternity. He walked over to the grave, poured at the freshly dug ground, spun in place atop it, and took a nap. Oh, so that's why he's the star keeper, because he has a record of every star that's ever existed. And that is how SCP-682 will spend the rest of his existence. Cold, alone, and unable to escape the eternal darkness that will befall the universe eventually. It's all well and good being immortal until even the universe dies of old age. So yeah, he may win every fight now, but eventually creation will have the last laugh. That was such a roller coaster. It went like kind of like sad to cool to sad to a really nice twist to sad again. Poor 682. I really like how the humans call him the star keeper though, and he's like revered to them as like an almighty being because he kind of is, but he literally has a log of every star in existence. That's just so amazing to me. But then at the same time, oh my God, the poor soul alone forever i have super heavily reconsidered my take on immortality i really like the idea of being immortal because i was like oh you could be a master of everything imagine it's like what ten thousand hours to master something i could come i could put ten thousand hours into everything i'll be i'll be the best at everything i'd have loads of money it'd be great uh you know i can appreciate people's short lives for what would be a short life but yeah that sucks that really sucks i'm pointing at my other screen but you get the point that that whole situation sucks i don't know if i want to be immortal anymore man <laughs> yeah i mean oh poor 682 though there must be an other scp that could live to the end of existence i'm sure there are other plenty indestructible scps right so that'd be really interesting maybe he can make friends Oh, I don't know. Poor guy. And as always, guys, thank you. I don't know what that was. Thank you for watching. As I said, when this video drops, I will actually be live on Twitch. So do check it out, please. Thank you. We're always around. You'll probably appreciate it. I know YouTube and Twitch are a little different in terms of the content you devour. So I completely understand. But, you know, it'll be fun to test it out anyway. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Love all of you. You're all amazing. You're perfect. You're great. Almost as cool as 682, but not much can beat that, so bye!